This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about why to run a node. And this is a follow up on yesterday's video where we talked about the role that people who run economic nodes play in the Bitcoin consensus. And in that video, I said, if you're running a Bitcoin node, but not using it actively for your own transactions, it doesn't really make that much of a difference for the network. So I wanted to follow up on that today. A lot of people had questions about that statement. So why run your own Bitcoin node? If you're not using your own node to interact with the Bitcoin network, then you're using someone else's node, like the one you connect to through Ledger Live or Trezor Suite or Coinbase or wherever you check on your Bitcoin. What are you going to do if Ledger's or Trezor's or Coinbase's Bitcoin nodes go down one day and you need to do a transaction? Or what if those nodes start feeding you fake data? How do you know that you actually have real Bitcoin if you're not verifying it yourself with your own node? If you have real Bitcoin, how do you know that that particular UTXO, that particular chunk of Bitcoin, hasn't been spent and is, in fact, still spendable? If you're still trusting other people's or corporations' nodes to answer these questions, you're just not yet a fully self-sovereign Bitcoiner. And if you use someone else's node to send your Bitcoin transactions, then you're leaking privacy as well because the node operator could be malevolent and keep logs of trans transactions and IP addresses and other related data. You're also relying on the good graces of the node operator to allow you to continue to use their node. Who knows, maybe you're even using the node of an Intel agency. And that's why I can't come up with a better explanation for why the folks at Ledger are so malevolent, offering this device and then tracking users and sending out their information. So if you're using a Ledger, I recommend that you migrate to something like a Blockstream Jade, Jade Plus, or a cold card. But back to Bitcoin nodes, Bitcoin is not a democracy. Bitcoin nodes do not vote. And if the U.S. government or BlackRock spins up a million nodes, a million hostile nodes, and we Bitcoin plebs only run 20, 25,000 nodes, it doesn't really matter because, again, Bitcoin is fortunately not a democracy. Every node operator, everyone who runs a Bitcoin node on their computer, gets to choose which software he or she wants to run on his node. If you run software that enforces different consensus rules, like maybe increasing the max supply from 21 million coins to 22 million coins, then you've basically just forked yourself away to what is essentially a new network with a new asset that's not traditional Bitcoin. And this asset will not be recognized as traditional Bitcoin by people running regular Bitcoin software. Also, good luck finding someone who wants your 22 million coin version of Bitcoin. No one's going to want that. It's the 21 million version that's entrenched and no one is going to run a Bitcoin node that runs software that dilutes their own holdings and moves the max supply from 21 million to 22 million. This is how the incentives work, fortunately, with Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is not about who has more nodes. And that's because you don't run a node to help Bitcoin necessarily or help the network necessarily. You run a node mostly to help yourself. You run a node so that, so that you don't need to ask permission from someone else to send Bitcoin or to check if you've received real Bitcoin. You also run a node so that if BlackRock or some other actor tries some funny business with Bitcoin consensus rules, you can just ignore them and keep running your own node and the version of the software that is best for you. Running your own node and using it for all of your own Bitcoin transactions is the best insurance you can have against hostile forks. And if only BlackRock, if we end up in a world where only BlackRock, Coinbase, and Ledger run Bitcoin nodes or just a small number of large corporations like this and everyone's trusting them, then we've basically lost this experiment. We failed and we're back to a captured financial system. So that's why it's very important that everyone participates and uses their own nodes. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button. That does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. Bitcoin node operators, as we said, get to decide which software they want to run. If Bitcoin Core or Bitcoin Nots devs do something evil, evil to the code, these are two different implementations of the Bitcoin consensus rules in the form of software, Bitcoin Core and Bitcoin Nots. We'll be talking about them in a moment. But if the devs for these projects decide to do something evil to the code, they will end up permanently destroying their reputation in the community, and Bitcoin node operators will simply choose not to run that version of the software. And news of this will spread very quickly on X and elsewhere and simply because there's so many eyes on these projects. Now, something important to note as well, auto updates or pushing Bitcoin software updates is an attack vector, obviously. If the Bitcoin devs could push something that onto your machine, that would be a problem, but fortunately they cannot. For that reason, Bitcoin 
Bitcoin node software, whether core or not, does not auto update. It doesn't get pushed onto your node by node by devs, but must be manually downloaded or updated by you. If Start9, for example, who offers these personal servers, I'll show you one in a minute. If Start9 puts bad code in their Bitcoin node software, word will get around Twitter and Noster and Start9 will go out of business in a few weeks. So how will we know though? Because as I said just a moment ago, because all of their code is open source and has many different eyeballs on it. Same goes for Umbral, Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin Knots, and all these other open source projects. So this is the main implementation that most people run for the Bitcoin software in terms of node software, Bitcoin Core. You can download it here for your operating system. There's an alternate implementation called Bitcoin Knots, which I also like very much as well. So I'll put links to both of these in the description notes below. You can see what nodes are running here. I'm on Clark Moody's Bitcoin dashboard. And you can see that most people are running the latest two versions of Bitcoin Core, Bitcoin Core 28 and Bitcoin Core 27.1. That's about 40, 41, 42% of the total nodes. And then you can see that people are running older versions of Core. If you're going to run Core, you probably should stay about maybe one update behind unless there's some real emergency reason to do it. You shouldn't be in a huge uh, rush to update your Bitcoin software when it comes to your node. And we can see here people running knots as well. Not as many people uh, would be an understatement, 351 according to this, so just one, 2%, but still very important to have different implementations of the Bitcoin consensus rules running because it makes the entire Bitcoin ecosystem more robust and resistant to capture. And when you have choices, then you begin to compare the two implementations. And so it's very important. And I wish we had even more implementations of Bitcoin so people don't just automatically run Bitcoin Core because that itself is an attack vector if uh, too many people are trusting Bitcoin Core. Makes the entire Bitcoin ecosystem more robust and resistant to capture if there are alternate implementations like Bitcoin Knots. It's also good, I think it's a good pressure to exert on Bitcoin Core devs if they're aware that alternate implementations exist and that people will migrate if Core doesn't do their job well. For example, Bitcoin Knots allows node runners to reject spam transactions from their own mempools and not relay this garbage to other nodes. And Core, Bitcoin Core, does not give you this ability. My favorite solution these days is a Start9 personal server connected running the Bitcoin Knots app for my Bitcoin node, and then you connect that to Sparrow Wallet. Sparrow Wallet talks to the node and allows the node to communicate with your hardware wallet, which works through Sparrow. So either a cold card or Jade hardware wallet. That's my ideal setup. Raspberry Pis, unfortunately, you can play around with them, but if you're gonna be a power user, and especially if you're gonna look at data that's buried deeper in the blockchain, Raspberry Pis no longer work that well for Bitcoin nodes. Thanks to the BRC20 spammers of last year and their promoters at places like Bitcoin Magazine, unfortunately, who helped to blow up the UTXO set last year with their scams on Bitcoin, their scammy coins on Bitcoin. Here's the server I'm using from Start9. It occasionally goes on sale. I think I got mine for under $500 and you can decide how much RAM you want. At this point, you should, uh, well, I guess they have two terabytes because the Bitcoin blockchains had already uh, 750 gigabytes, but you can choose uh, how much storage you want. I think two terabytes is probably fine for now, but you can spring for the larger one. And when this is sold out, or if this is too much money, Paul Lamb has a great video here on his channel, how to build your own Start9 server pure at half the price. So that'd be the upgraded, uh, the even the more expensive Start9 server. So I'll put a link to this in the description notes below. If you want to download Sparrow, you can do that from here. Make sure you're at sparrowwallet.com. Sparrowwallet.org, I believe, is still up, and that's a scammy website that will give you malware and not good Sparrow software. So you can download here based on your operating system. And this project has very, very good documentation. Uh, I'll put a link to this in the, in the notes below. But we can see here, when you first set up Sparrow, you have a choice of how to connect to the Bitcoin network. You can use one of their trusted public servers, which isn't the worst thing in the world when you're just getting started in Bitcoin. But of course, this whole video is about running your own Bitcoin node. So you're going to want to migrate to where you're using one of these two versions where you either run Bitcoin Core on your laptop or desktop on the same machine as Sparrow. Then you can link using this green button or you run a, a server like the Start9 server or Raspberry Pi, and then you connect to it over an Electrum server using uh, Electors, E-L-E-T-R-S, uh, E-L-E-C-T-R-S, which is an app 
in Start 9. Again, this isn't easy. This isn't super easy for the general public to do yet, but something to play around with. And the more serious you become about your Bitcoin, the more serious you should take these things. So I'll put a link again so you can download Bitcoin Core or Bitcoin Knots. I also have many, many uh, lectures and recorded live classes on this. For example, in April of last year, I did one on setting up the Start 9 and running nodes. And then I have a couple more recent live class recordings where I talk about how to link your node through Sparrow and do single sig, do multi sig, and even in my most recent class, how to mine Bitcoin using uh, your Start 9 server, using ocean mining, using datum, and using a bid axe. So in conclusion, if you're running a node, but then relying on someone else's node for your actual Bitcoin transactions, then you're letting that node operator pick the version of Bitcoin rules that he or she wants. You're letting that node operator decide which blocks and transactions are valid. And hopefully they're going to decide that your transactions and blocks are valid. If there's ever a contentious fork in the future, you're definitely going to want to be able to run software that rejects blocks or consensus rules potentially consensus rules that you don't like. If you run a node but don't actually use it for your own Bitcoin activity, then you're basically just LARPing. You're still sort of stuck in a fiat mindset where you're relying on your bank or brokerage to tell you how much you own of something and what it's worth. If you're relying on Trezor's node or Ledger's node to tell you how much Bitcoin you have and what it's worth, then you're doing it wrong because Bitcoin is a bearer asset. And so in order to take full advantage of the benefits that Bitcoin can give you, you should hold your own private keys on a hardware wallet and you should run your own node in order to take maximum advantage of the self-sovereignty that Bitcoin gives all of us if we're just willing to do the work to figure these things out. So instead of trading ship coins, instead of trying to predict where Bitcoin's going, going next week, you should really focus on becoming a hodler securing your Bitcoin in self-custody and running your own node. If you want to follow up on this, I'll put a link to my paid course and to the paid uh, the live classes in the links below. But this is definitely something you can figure out on your own if you're used to using computers and doing these sort of things. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.